Today we've learned about just God's sovereignty, His, His plan, His control, and in the midst of what looks like maybe out of control, there is, you know, God's hand. And even <clears throat> in our society now, we see, we'll see things that are changing, things that God did not design, yet He's still in control. He, he still understands what is going on. So we'll read about that um, today and learn about are the the evil exchange that we talked about before. So let's turn to Romans 1. Let's all stand. Read from 18 to 32. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes, His eternal power, and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, so that they are without excuse. For even though they knew God, and they did not, they did not honor Him as God, or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man, and of birds and four-footed animals and crawling creatures. Therefore, God gave them over in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. For they exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason God gave them over to degrading passions, for their women exchanged a natural function for what is unnatural. And in the same way also the men abandoned the natural function of the women, and burned in their desire toward one another men with men committing indecent acts and receiving in their own persons the due penalty of their error. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do those things which are not proper, being filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice, their gossips, slanders, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents without understanding, untrustworthy, unloving, unmerciful. And although they knew, knew the ordinance of God, that those who practice such things are worthy of death, they not only do the same, but also give hearty approval to those who practice them. Thank God for His word. Let's be seated. As always, we turn our heart to the Lord and ask for help as we come to the truth. But we've been over this section of the text several weeks now, and we just barely begin to understand the significance of it in our own life. We pray that today, Lord, you will open our eyes to see clearer, open our hearts to be more sensitive to you, and just teach us, Lord, what you want us to know, to hear, to respond to. Not so much for the information of things, but in relationship with you, how we would walk in your truth. Today we're talking about things sensitive, about homosexuality and these things. How do we apply to our lives, Lord? So you, we pray that you will help us. So instruct us and help us to understand and help us to respond. We thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, there's a progression that we have been moving steadily, and sometimes we move so slowly we don't see the big picture. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, we, we see, as you see in the outline, the wrath of God revealed and God lets men go. We see in the review also uh, the, uh, the, the exchanges, the evil exchanges that uh, uh, represent the heart of man. Uh, which uh, include us, even though we are the redeemed, there's a tendency, this, uh, this uh, leaning that's always there. Uh, once we, uh, anytime we uh, move outside of God's grace or, 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 or our relationship with Him is broken, our fellowship with Him is broken, 
we fall right into this tendency again, and so we need to be very sensitive to that. Uh, and so we, le we learn uh, the three exchanges. Man exchange God for idol, man exchange truth for lies, man exchange relation for perversion. Now these are just words and, 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 and uh, anchors for, for the thought, but the details is kind of unfolding out for us uh, so, th so that we, 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 we see what God wants us to see. So, uh, for, for number one, when, when we say uh, we exchange God for idol, we're talking about the essence of sin. The essence of sin is that replacement of God by created things. And uh, today we'll touch base again on the uh, exchange in truth for lies. So, so it is an expression of sin, and we begin to see that as sin uh, enters into our life, it, uh, it starts in the heart. It, uh, it begins with the uncleanness in the heart, but it begins to express it out in physical behaviors. Uh, that, that we begin to see that the evil is, is kind of spilling out uh, in, in the society and then especially, you know, we need to be sensitive in our own life. And when, when, when it gets to the, uh, the exchange of relation to, uh, for perversion, we see the extent of it. The once it begins and when we don't have God's grace and God, the power of salvation and, and the power of the Holy Spirit to stop and to restrain and to change, it never stops. It, it will go will to the full extent of it, the full re rejection of God, the, the full re replacement of God, and with defiance and with design and with, uh, you know, with uh, determination of the heart of evil men. And, and we see that uh, the extent of evil is, is tremendous beyond imagination. And that's why uh, 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 Scripture declares that men are without excuse. Because when you begin to see that, you understand that God' wrath is just, and the, the, the desperate situation for man, for us to run to God uh, for our own redemption and continue uh, sanctification, but also we, we begin to look at the world in a different way. They can't help it uh, unless they understand the gospel. Unless the gospel comes to them, there's no way out for our friends and our loved ones outside of school of the gospel of Christ. So it be, begin to inform on us uh, or compel us to, to be about the business of the kingdom uh, because the world is desperate uh, even uh, when they don't know it. Uh, they are determined against uh, Christ and, uh, and, and, and the things of Christ but they need him and they need the gospel more than ever. And that, that, sh that should uh, uh, motivate us to respond uh, uh, in, in our mission and the Great Commission. Uh, so, uh, since we already have the, uh, <coughs> uh, the, the review, I just uh, kind of uh, connect uh, real quickly with you and then we move forward. And uh, that's the, 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 the key thing is the exchange and, uh, and, and it is the exchange, the replacement of God at the center of, of our universe and everything else is uh, spinning out of control because of that. And, uh, and the replacement of God by idols, and we just remind ourselves that it's, it's not uh, the physical idols that is in, in, in view, but anything uh, or anyone or, or, or any uh, reason uh, that obscure God in our heart or take God's place in our heart is called idol. So it can be something very good. It's, it's something that by itself can be uh, noble and even godly, uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, you know, God, God ordained uh, purpose, but if it is anything that is less than God that become center in our life, it may be family, it may be career, it may be even ministry, uh, and if those things become center uh, and replacing God or even obscure God, we have fallen into the exchange. And once we have fallen into the exchange, uh, unless God uh, carried us out, uh, we become futile in our thinking. Uh, we, we can't think straight. Um, our, our heart is less responsive to the light. We, we, we become uh, more callous to the truth. Uh, we ignore the truth a lot easier. And we become self-deceived because uh, now we, we think what we, uh, we decide is best. What we come up is right. And so we go the, go the way and uh, not ultimately to destruction because we are the redeemed, uh, 
but the, the path uh, of uh, f uh, the fallen man is still very vivid before us. Uh, so the, the call to understand that. Now let's uh, move to the second point, and that is men exchange truth for lies. We, we began the, uh, the introduction of that last time. So I, I also want to just touch base of that and move rather quickly through this point. Because I want to get to the third point where, where we need to, to uh, spend some time to really understand the extent of the evil that is in us and the evil that is in society uh, and how to respond to that. <clears throat> so come back uh, to second point. Let me just uh, start in verse 22. Professing to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man and of birds and of four-footed animals and crawling creatures. Therefore God gave them over in the lust of their hearts to impurity so that their bodies would be dishonored among men. <coughs> so what, what Paul is uh, introducing here is, you know, the... Uh, first, when, when, when man rejects revelation, it's, it's a revelation in, in nature. God said, uh, everything concerning me I already gives sufficient light for all men, uh, all people in the world to respond. So we are uh, uh, without excuse when we don't respond. So every man is given sufficient light for himself or herself to respond to that light. And, and uh, those who respond more, uh, will be given more light, uh, and we have example of that, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in scripture, uh, like Lydia, like uh, Cornelius, uh, like uh, Queen of the South, people who se seek God and God leads uh, them more into uh, opportunities where God bring other people, bring the apostle, bring uh, the word of uh, scripture, uh, uh, and, and man of God to explain uh, the, the truth, and they are uh, brought into the, the light. But, uh, but uh, those are rare and, 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 and very few. Uh, the, the majority, if we don't say all men uh, outside of God's grace, all men reject God, all men reject the light, all men uh, walk in, in darkness. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Paul is saying that uh, the, 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 the matter of rejection is not only from within, uh, it, it, it will show the, 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 the essence uh, of the sinfulness within, and that is uncleanness, is impurity, but it will begin to work itself out into the lives. And that's what we see here, that once the exchange of God's glory for, uh, for an image, uh, exchange the glory of the incorruptible uh, uh, God for an image of the form of, of corruptible man, uh, God gave them over to the lust of their heart to impurity. So, so the thing that it will begin to take over from within is, is not only, you know, uh, good, uh, but uh, less so good, but now it becomes evil, it becomes uh, impurities, and then it begins to work itself out into the bodies, into life, into activities, so that their bodies would be dishonored among men. Uh, so nothing is contained uh, inside, and nothing is contained uh, uh, if it is evil outside of God's control. And, and that's, uh, that's the, 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 the extent and uh, the horror of it. And then seeing that, uh, men exchange truth for lies. They, they, they don't accept that. They, they go darker and darker in, in their hearts. So let's, uh, let's just uh, begin with that. Uh, let me just uh, go for the second, uh, second exchange in verse 25. For they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed over. Amen. So, so, so now we, we have the, the reason repeated and that is they, they replace uh, God and worship the creature but now it is uh, exchange of truth for lies. Uh, so the, the second evil exchange is the exchange of truthful life, meaning uh, whatever revelation given now is no longer is able to penetrate into the heart uh, because God has given the heart into impurities and now they are uh, in the process of believing uh, the, the lies, rejecting the truth and working that reality out in, in their bodies, in their uh, daily living. But let's just uh, look at uh, the essence of, um, of the sinfulness in the term of uh, impurity, uncleanness. Uh, the word uh, therefore in verse uh, 24 connect uh, to, uh, to the exchange of glory 
uh, of God's uh, incorruptible, uh, for uh, image of man corruptible. Therefore, uh, so so once the exchange uh, happened, when 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 uh, the the denial rejection of God happened, uh, the judgment is that it continues to 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 move forward. Uh, God uh, let them go. God does not work to stop or restrain them. Uh, and, and, and the next step is, uh, is sinfulness, is uncleanness in the heart. Uh, so the judgment of God's wrath is, uh, is now uh, in the progression of man going for what he desired, uh, going for what uh, he committed to do. Uh, and uh, the word uncleanness here is a very strong word. Uh, it's actually uh, talking about the content of the grave. Uh, so the uncleanness is not just something, uh, you know, uh, dirty or, uh, or, or something that we can wash away. Uh, Paul is using something uh, that means rot and filth and decay and, uh, you know, it's just a total defiling stuff. Uh, something that you, 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 know, you can't imagine that uh, uh, that uh, can be there, but you know, you just think about the grave, and you dig up the grave, you know, you see all sort of things that is so repugnant, and 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 uh, and that is uh, man when when man re replace God with idols. Idols don't remain, uh, you know, uh, healthy, wholesome. Uh, it it is uh, the the gateway to unfilth uh, un uh, to filthiness, to impurity. Uh, uh, to, def uh, to defiling uh, vice. Uh, and that is the word that Paul used uh, often in his, uh, in his letters to express the condition of man. He used that in Corinthians 2, uh, 12, 21, Galatians 5, 8, uh, 19, uh, Ephesians 5, 3, uh, Thessalonians 4, 7. Meaning uh, in, in all the description of, uh, of man and, and the condition of man, Outside of God, the, the word is filthiness, the word is uncleanness, the, the word is, uh, is the stuff in the grave that is now in the heart. Now, a lot of times we don't think of our heart that way. We, we don't think the tendency of our heart is, is, is uh, evil. Uh, we may say that we strive for good and we don't measure it up, uh, but, uh, but instead of moving to the light, once you reject God and move out of the, the, uh, the centrality of God, we descend very rapidly, very quickly to the evil that is inside. Uh, <coughs> so, so man is given to the rotten vow um, and uncleanness and impurity that is inside. And, uh, and this is the result of the wrath of God. Uh, not, not, not only that he, he does not stop uh, or restrain man uh, when, when they exchange uh, God for, uh, for created things, he, he let them be and then he, uh, in a way, uh, opened opportunity and, and, and compound their wickedness with, with opportunity to do uh, their, to their field uh, what they so desire to do. And so uh, it starts in the heart. So it started in the heart. God gave them over in the lust of their hearts to impurity. Uh, so, so the heart is emphasized here, uh, here and, and, and you see, you, you see the, 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 the progression. As God gave man up to himself. Man has nothing but, it, but his heart. Man, man has no other guy but, but his own heart. But, he, but his own heart is corrupt. And, and, and so man's behavior now become to, uh, begin to show that corruption, that evil, uh, that is inside. Uh, we, we, we know from Jeremiah 17 verse 9 that the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Uh, that the heart of man is, uh, is, is beyond control. Uh, de deceitful above all things, desperately wicked. Um, <coughs> and, uh, and, and that's, that's all that is uh, with, within man. Um, so when God gave man up, give men up, he gives them up to in, uh, uncleanness which come out of their own inside. Uh, so when, when, when man is, is given opportunity to decide uh, and he has his heart to decide, things don't come out in wisdom, things don't come out in no, uh, no nobility, even though in, in the connection of, and relationship between men, one may be better than the other, uh, but the definition of, of uh, of the, of the, should I say, quality of life, 
quality of decision, quality of, uh, uh, of pursuit, everything is defined by one word, lust, <coughs> lust uh, to uh, impurity. So move, move in from a strong desire, uh, the, uh, the defined as lust, uh, is, is talking about a strong desire, in a, a craving, uh, but a craving that is wrong, that is foul, that is wicked. Uh, so man without God is now having a str strong craving, strong drive uh, in his life, but the drive is toward uncleanness, to, to, uh, to evil. Uh, Ephesians 2, chapter three, uh, Ephesians 2, verse 3, uh, tells us about that uh, and uses that same word, craving. Uh, all of us also live among them at one time among the, uh, talking about all of us, uh, the redeemed, uh, is in this condition before, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desire and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. And, 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 and this, is, this is the description of man that, uh, that uh, we, we find gratification in the cravings of, of our sinful nature. What do we do? We follow its desire and thoughts. So we are guided by, by our own insight, by our own heart and that lead us to impurity, to evil, and, and there is no, no restraint. Uh, so, so, so we say, well, you know, I'm not doing anything, even though you know, I'm not too close to God, and uh, I just pursue my life. I, I, I pursue uh, opportunities for career, uh, for, for the good life. But see, the, the good life is not that good. Uh, the, the good life is evil because it is a rejection of God, it is a replacement of the, the created things over the Creator. It, it is uh, taking us away from the kingdom. And, and, and in the perspective uh, of, uh, of God, it is, it is the, the, the working out of man's impurity, uh, the, 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 the stuff of the graves that is now taking over control of that life. Uh, so from, uh, from the world perspective, uh, things that seem uh, respectable, uh, from, uh, uh, from God's uh, perspective, it is evil and it is impurity. And, and Paul is saying now what is inside is now begin to manifest outside. Uh, so that, uh, so God gave over the lust of their hearts to impurity, meaning, uh, okay, you want to go that way? Uh, I'll let you to, de to decide. I, 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 I let you the freedom. I give you the freedom to do what you want to replace uh, God with, uh, with, uh, 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 with yourself and uh, with created things, uh, that the whole process now begins to work out in the dishonor of the body, meaning things that happen in life uh, that is unworthy uh, or, or wrong in God's design, so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. Uh, <coughs> Now it begin to uh, to uh, seep into and begin to open up in in in, 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 in the sense of uh, using the body for the wrong purpose, and, and you will see that uh, that man without God, uh, the, the the tendency in using the body for the wrong purpose is expressed in in uh, in uh, uh, the the lust of the heart, the the, the handle of uh, uh, of the, the bodies in terms of sexual activities. So we begin to see that. Man without God always goes wrong in, in terms of, uh, of the use of the body, uh, the, 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 the desire of the heart. So we see uh, sexual deviation, perversion, uh, promiscuity, and all these things. And, and we have a, so, uh, a society that is preoccupied uh, with, uh, with uh, pornography, with uh, uh, sexual uh, um, appeals, uh, and... and, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, the use of the body that is uh, outside of God's purpose and outside of uh, of God's design. Uh, <laughs> now we will get to that point in a little bit uh, to the th to the next point when it becomes the the ultimate expression of of defiance uh, against God and uh, and uh, and against God created order. Uh, the the wo the working out of the impurity in the heart, the evil in the heart, into the body, uh, into the the daily activities. Uh, now it's become the norm. So, so in, in scripture, Paul uh, uh, compare uh, that tendency with the with the, the life of the redeemed. He 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 said that we are different. 
we have the ability to control the body and we have the ability to, to walk in sanctification. Uh, and he said that in Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 4 to 3. Uh, and so he said, this is the will of God, even your sanctification. You should abstain from sexual sin uh, and you should know how to possess your body in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of sensuality as the Gentiles or the heathen who do not know God. So there is uh, the, the, the contrast here, and that is uh, when, when man is given to himself and he replaced God uh, uh, with uh, himself or with uh, uh, created uh, orders, he, he uh, follow a lust, a craving desire for evil, and the working out of the impurity uh, 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 and, and, and uh, evil from his heart begin, begin to work out in the bodies. Uh, that process is stopped, that process is reversed uh, in sanctification for those who belong to Christ. Uh, and, and, and the evidence of that uh, transformation is the ability to control the body. Uh, this is the will of God, even your sanctification. You should abstain from sexual sin. And, 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 and he said, uh, how do you do that? You should know how to possess your body in sanctification and honor. Uh, and, so, and so we move to what uh, the sexual expression. Uh, in, a, in a minute we'll be dealing with uh, uh, homosexuality as the ultimate uh, defiance against God and his order. Uh, but, but it comes from the, uh, the ability or, or the transformation that give us the control over our body. And, and that should be uh, a sign or a measurement uh, for those who belong to God. And that is the ability to control the body. He said that the heathens don't have that. Uh, they, they are driven by the lust. They use the body to satisfy what is inside. Uh, but you are not like that. You, you're not like the heathens. You're not like the Gentiles. They do not know God. They do not know how to control their bodies. You are different. You should know how to possess your body in sanctification and honor. And we'll learn how. It's not like we have a supernatural uh, ability that, uh, that just every time we, we need to, we just turn it on. Uh, it is a process that, uh, that, uh, that we work through in our lives. Uh, and we get to the point where, where the, the focus is, is, is from the inside, but the inside is, is not lust, the inside is not impurity, the inside is God's and God's truth, and that is how we begin to have the ability to control the outside. Uh, so just ahead, uh, just jumping ahead, you know, if, if we have problem controlling the outside, the expression, the behavior, the body functions, um, it, and you focus on how to control that, then you can't. Because the problem, as he said, it is from the inside working it out. So you have to start from the inside uh, and understand the, the process. Uh, and he come back and say, uh, now as, as they work in out that, uh, that, uh, that process uh, of wrath, God given them uh, over to impurities of their heart uh, and the dishonoring of their body, uh, they, they, they begin to, uh, to embrace that process wholeheartedly. Uh, and so the verse 25, they exchange the truth for God for a lie. Now they really be, be, uh, believe in the lie. How, how, how strongly they believe in the lie? They worship and serve the creature rather than the creator. So you see the, the process from beginning, revelation given. Everybody has enough light to respond. And you reject the light, you, you shut it down, you, you, uh, you suppress it by uh, unrighteousness, as Paul said. Then, then the light goes away. And then you have no light but your own heart, uh, your own process, your own decision. But your, your own heart is rotten, your own heart is evil. So whatever you decide from the inside, it working out that process from the outside. But that's all you have. So you embrace that kind of life totally. Uh, and now you commit to... Uh, unrighteousness. You commit to worshiping the creature rather than the creator. You, 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 you commit to wholeheartedly uh, to the trivial pursuit of this life and to reject the eternal things. So, so when we say uh, worship creature rather than creator, we have an image of, you know, uh, of, of people, uh, of idols, or of uh, uh, birds and uh, four-footed uh, animals. 
no, we, we are saying that you're now committed to, uh, to something lesser than God, and you, and, and, and you don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, let me just come back to say, you know, uh, a man can be fully 100% committed to his family and feel very strongly about that, very noble about it, and very happy about that. But that is the replacement of God, the exchange of truth to lie, and, and the family now become God's, and, and he's totally embracing that, worshiping that, and serving that, not, not seeing anything wrong with that, while in the perspective of Scripture, it is the impurity of the heart, the evil of the heart, now become evident in, in all the activities of his body. And uh, not, not, not only in the sexual, uh, physical expression of it, but all the things that he does now is to serve that, uh, uh, the, the object of worship, which is the creature rather than, uh, rather than the God. So, so, so the, 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 the danger is, is totally, uh, you know, evident here. So in, in, in Isaiah uh, 44, verse 20, is very interesting uh, description. Uh, uh, Isaiah is talking about a, uh, a sculptor uh, who made himself a god out of a piece of wood, and then he hold the god in, in his hand like this. And, and uh, Isaiah asks, uh, how come you never ask that uh, you are holding a lie in your hand? Not, not an idol, but you're holding a lie in your hand. Meaning you, 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 you're holding something that you know that is, uh, is something that you make, make out, but you lie to yourself. You said, this is worthy uh, of, uh, uh, of worship, uh, worthy for commitment of life. Nehemiah also said, you have forgotten me and trusted a lie. So the working out of the darkness of the heart is that you, you become totally committed to the lie that is the, the, the re replacement of God. Uh, so the, the progression is that the replacement happened, God gives you to, to that lies, and then you believe and totally commit to that lies, meaning the, the, the spiral keep going and keep going um, uh, to, to, to the point of no return. So now the exchange is complete. Uh, not only that uh, they exchange truth for lies, they worship the lies. Uh, and and the, the proof is shown in the commitment to lesser things, to, uh, to created things, rather than uh, to uh, the Creator. And bringing that into our, our perspective, you know, uh, we don't bow before idols in terms of physical, but we need to, to understand that once we leave God, uh, we always get here. Uh, and only God's grace that redeem us and rescue us and break, break that cycle left to us, we always get here. That is, we believe the lies, we commit to the lies. Uh, <laughs> And so when, when, when God is replaced by self or, or, or by created things, self has nothing inside but uh, wickedness, uh, and, and uh, it begins to express out in, into the daily activities, and as it, uh, it uh, expresses out in daily activity, it, be, it becomes the life itself, it becomes it be, be, become the commitment, it becomes the pursuit, it becomes the worship, it becomes the service, and men uh, keep going until he is doomed in, in, in condemnation. Uh, and so that's, uh, that's, that's, that's the second uh, exchange. And, uh, and now it moved to even the, 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 the worst uh, expression, and that is man exchange relation for perversion. Now, be, be, before we get there, uh, Paul is kind of uh, so frustrated uh, when he sees this picture. When, when he's talking about replacing creature with creator, he kind of is uh, saying that if, if nobody uh, worship God, I'm going to worship God. If, if everybody replacing God with uh, creatures, with idols, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to worship God and God alone. So, so when he's talking about uh, the creator at the end of 25, he, 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 he put in with a doxology, he put in the praise, he said, I'm going to praise him. You will go ahead and replace him if, if that's what, uh, what you decided to do, but, but I'm going to choose uh, to worship him. So when he said that uh, man exchanged truth for God for a lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator, uh, Paul said, who is blessed forever, amen. 
so, 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 so he said, uh, this is where I take this stand. I mean, I'm talking about the condition of the world, and I'm talking about the, pr the, the progression of evil in the hearts of man. But we are different. Uh, we know who, who the, the, the true uh, creator is. We are the one who can make the choice because we are the redeemed. So it's, it's remind us, again, as we hear this in, it can be negative. It can t talk about we as, as part of the world, and yes, we are. A, a, a part of the world, we, we understand the, the tendency of the heart, we understand the progression of evil, but, but, but we need to stop at time and say, but that's not me. Yes, I understand the, the danger of it, but for me, I, I know the God who is there, I know who the Creator, I know who is in my heart, uh, and He is blessed forever, I worship Him. So, so from time to time, as you hear me talking about uh, the progression of evil and the expression of it, Say it in your mind, it's not so with me, it's not so with me, because I know who he is. I made the choice for him, <laughs> if it is true. Uh, if not, then you say, you know, uh, I, I have been identified, I have been, I have been put into the picture. Uh, so, so, as we hear this text, it's either separated us out as, as, uh, as not in, in the group that is moving toward, uh, w with, the, with the world, or, or, or the group that said, uh, not me, I know who God is, He is in my heart uh, the, 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 uh, at the center, and I, and I replace all the world with Him and not the other way around. I exchange all the lies of the world uh, with the truth of God in, in Scripture, and I worship Him. So make a note of that, you know, and, 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 uh, and be encouraged, uh, even though the picture is, uh, is uh, dark and gloomy. Now, Paul moves to, the, to, to, to the, 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 the next level of progression, and he connects that, and he said, For this reason, God gave them over to degrading passions, for the woman exchanged the natural functions for what is unnatural, and in the same way also a man abandoned the natural function of woman and burned in their desire toward one another, man with man committing indecent acts and receiving in their own persons the due penalty of their errors. So the third reason God's wrath is the exchange of normal relation uh, for unnatural re relation of perversion here. So the, 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 here is the description, a clear description of homosexual behavior, uh, and we need to understand this exchange in the context of God's wrath. And, and you need to hear me uh, clearly here because we're not going after the homosexual or, or, go, uh, or, or do a study of homosexuality. It is in the context of the exchange. And, 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 and we have to know why it is here that Paul brought into the picture homosexuality and, uh, and the activities here in the description. Uh, now it becomes very clear that, uh, that uh, it becomes fully engaged in the bodily function, in not only in the bodily function, but in the philosophy of life. Uh, and, and Paul bringing the picture of homosexual, homosexual lifestyle, homosexual value, uh, as uh, the illustration of the complete re replacement of God in the heart. But let me uh, walk back with you and, and, and show you the, the sequence, because three times in the passage, uh, Paul repeats a threefold sequence of thought, and, and each time develop it for us. Uh, so the, the sequence is this. Number one, step one, Human uh, exchange God for what God has made. We prefer the creature for the creator. So number one is the exchange. Step number two, God hand us over to what we prefer. That's number two. And number three, we act out externally and bodily what is in our heart. So that's, that's three steps. So step one, we exchange God for, what, for, the, uh, for the created things. Number two, God give us over to what we prefer. And number three, we act out, uh, we, we express out externally what is inside. Uh, so, so here, the, the, the first time, go back to verse 23. They exchange the glory of God, uh, of the incorruptible God, for an image in the form of corruptible man. So human exchange God for created things. Step number two, God hand us over to what we prefer. Therefore, verse 24, God gave them over in the lust of their hearts to impurity. And so now, step three, we act out externally in our life, in our body, what is inside. 
uh, bottom of verse 24, so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. So in response to the rejection of God's glory, uh, God's, uh, God's degrees or God wills or God lets it happen that there is a disorder, there is disordering, uh, the, a confusion, uh, a change of order in their bodily life moving into dishonorable deeds. Uh, so so, so the, the wrath of God is that what is inside will be carried out outside uh, as an expression of rejection of God. So the second time, the sin of dishonoring God in the heart now find expression now in physical body, uh, and now that is evil and destructive, uh, and that is the outcome of God's wrath. Uh, so the evil and destructive physical behavior is now defined as homosexuality, and homosexuality is the ultimate expression of corruption of the heart. Uh, so step one, um, human, uh, 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 we exchange God for created things, verse 25, for they exchange the truth of God for a lie, and that in parallel to 23 that we read before, exchange of the glory of God for the image of corruptible man. So the truth of God is that God is glorious, and he is to be desired and, uh, and worshipped above all things. And the lie is that we prefer us humans and, and creature more th as more desirable than God. And so step two, God hands us over to what we prefer. You look at verse 26. For this reason God gave them over to degrading passions. So God gave now to, to the degrading passions and that par parallel was verse 24. God gave them over to the lust of their heart to impurity. So God gave them to, to what they prefer. And then step three, we act now externally in our body, uh, the, the internal, the spiritual condition. And we just read that in verse 26, the woman exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural. And in the same way, men abandoned the natural function and burning their desire toward one another, men with men committing uh, indecent acts. That's parallel to so that their bodies would be dishonored among them in verse 24. So, so now we, we, we see the, the next step is, is now working out in the lifestyle. So, so the rejection of God can be seen now in the lifestyle. Nobody rejects God in the heart alone. Whatever you begin in the rejection, when you, when you shut down the, 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 the light of, of the gospel, uh, of revelation, to the replacement of God, the exchange of God by created things, to the impurity of the heart, is always work out in li lifestyle. So I use lifestyle is, is, is and compassion uh, beyond just, just bodily sexual uh, function, but everything that is in life. And now moving to, uh, to the, third, uh, the, th the third time, he go through the whole process again. Uh, the sin of dishonoring God in the heart now find expression in our physical body, and, and now the, uh, the become destructive in, uh, uh, to, to how, our whole being. So step three now in verse 28. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, so that parallel to the exchange truth, God for a lie, and parallel to exchange the glory of God for the image uh, of corruptible man. Uh, so simply they get to the point they don't want God in their knowledge anymore. Meaning they totally reject God out of the not, they deny him in his uh, his existence. So you can see the progression from from the revelation in in creation to the point man doesn't even um, man doesn't even recognize acknowledge that God exists. Step two, uh, God hand us over to what we prefer. Verse twenty eight. God gave them over to a depraved mind. So now the, the, their mind can't even see God, can't even think of God, can not see anything. So that's parallel to 26, God gave them over to degrading passion. Parallel to 24, gave them over in the lust of the heart to impurity. So God's response uh, to, the, uh, to, the universe, uh, to the universal exchange of God for creature is to let them go to the ultimate level. And then, and then verse 28, now we act out in our bodily uh, uh, form, verse 28, to do those things which are not proper. So now, uh, now everything in life is, is outside of God, is now uh, improper, is in the rejection of God. And so, 
all these things are now uh, find expression in, in a very curious picture that Paul is now put, be, put, be, uh, uh, put uh, in front of us, and it is homosexual behavior. In terms of, in term of dishonoring the body, in terms of the lifestyle that is not proper, in, in terms of the summation of rejection of God and exchange, a total exchange of God's uh, glory to the created beings. Uh, and so we want to look into this, uh, this uh, 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 problem, uh, the issue of homosexuality, not, not in terms of, of the act uh, or the, the, the sin itself, but in terms of, of, of what, what is informing us in the process uh, of God's wrath uh, in the context here. But let's, uh, let's take uh, the, the view of society right now in terms of uh, homosexuality behavior, uh, homosexual behavior. Uh, this, uh, this, this sin or this uh, issue has become uh, a very, uh, has taken on a unique uh, property in our culture. Uh, in a way, it has been declassified as sin and turned into some sort of uh, civil right uh, issue. Uh, in, 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 in our context, uh, right now it becomes a political issue, not a moral issue. It becomes an issue of freedom uh, uh, and not a spiritual issue because uh, man has now turned it in, uh, the, in, uh, upside down. Uh, and, and it is being advocated not in the private sector alone, but in public sector, in school, in government, in court, in, la uh, in, in, uh, the, uh, in, uh, in the government. Uh, and so, so we, we need to be dealing with that in a little bit. <laughs> so now let me just start to, uh, to, to, to start with the biblical view, start with the, the text in Roman itself where, we, where our text that we've been reading. Paul wants to show us how sinful man is. He wants to do it in a very concise way. Uh, he wants to demonstrate the total exchange uh, of God with, with created things. Uh, he wants to show the evil affection, that, that, uh, the, the evil condition that is within man and now begin to show up uh, on the outside. So he picked the, the, the most disgraceful, degrading passion and the, the, the most... Uh, uh, a vivid picture that is opposed to God design and God uh, uh, order, and that is homosexuality. And because it is not not even a perversion, uh, but it is an inversion. Uh, it goes further than perversion. Uh, the, the word refers to uh, you know the unnatural sexual relationship, but it's the whole lifestyle and value here. So perversion is a deviation from the norm going wrong from a standard with the intention of committing the wrong. So that's perversion. But inversion is much more than that. Inversion is a, a de determined usurping of the created order, turning it upside down in defiance. It is an active opposition to the norm. So we have the L L LGBT agenda, uh, the lesbian, gay, uh, bisexual, uh, uh, tra tra transgender, agenda is, it is a inversion to biblical norm, uh, to the created order of God. And, and it is the result of exchanging God for self and created things. And it is the result of God's wrath on the, uh, on, on the world. So the, the, the cause of, uh, of uh, the, 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 the LGBT uh, condition or, uh, or environment is not simple. Now, we'll, we'll touch base of that shortly, but uh, let me just say the solution for that is still, uh, is still very clear. It is still the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But uh, let's look at the term Paul is using to describe the evil being expressed through the bodily uh, function as, ex as a result of exchange in God to, for created things. So we look back and we see the word lust, impurity, dishonor, degrading passions, unnatural, burning their desire, indecent acts, not proper. Uh, so, you know, in, in answer to, uh, to a lot of questions here, we uh, asked, what is the view of Scripture regarding homosexual behavior? Is it wrong? Well, Scripture said yes. Is it a sin? Scripture said yes. It is a lust from impurity and uncleanness that is dishonor the bodies. 
It is out of degrading passion. It is unnatural. And we would note that because we're going to come back to say, is, are we born with it? Is it an orientation or is it a choice? Uh, it is uncontrollable desire. It is expressed uh, through indecent acts and behavior. It is improper. It is something that I ought not to do. Uh, now the Bible speak uh, uh, not frequently about homosexuality, uh, but when it does, it does it very clearly uh, in, in condemnation it, as a sin. Uh, uh, I, I'll just mention it without reading in Genesis 19. Uh, and you, you may recall that it is the destruction of uh, Sodom and uh, Gomorrah uh, as a result of the rampant practice of homosexuality. Uh, just the way the whole city of lustful men went after the two angels uh, at Lot's house is, is just uh, scary and repugnant beyond expression. But just a few verses uh, for uh, the uh, perspective of, uh, of, the, of Scripture uh, on homosexuality. Uh, turn to Le Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. Uh, make it very straight. You shall not lie with a male as one lies with a female. It is an abomination. Uh, very clear. Uh, you, you, you can't do that. It is an abomination before the Lord. Uh, verse, uh, chapter 20, verse, eight, uh, verse uh, 13. If there is a man who lies with a male as those who lie with a woman, both of them have committed a detestable act. They shall surely be put to death. The blood guiltiness is upon them. Uh, so the, the civil judgment in terms of penalty may have changed and no longer for, call for that penalty immediately. But the moral standard of God's remain the same. It is an abomination. It is a detestable thing before the Lord. Uh, but in, in, in uh, the New Testament, you find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Uh, it's just turned there because it has a very, very clear connection to the church. Uh, so 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 10. Paul uh, uh, talked to the church in Corinth. He said that, Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do, do not be deceived. Neither the sexual immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanders, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. So, so, so he's, he's uh, he listing a, a whole list here, and obviously homosexuality is not the only sin that incurs the wrath of God. Uh, all sins and every sin is an offense to God. The point here is a lifestyle, not a, not, not a single act, but those who lead a lifestyle, a long-term habit without repentance, as idolaters, adulterers, prostitutes, homosexual uh, thieves, uh, drunkards, landers, winders, prove that they are outside of God's grace and therefore outside of the kingdom. But Paul follows uh, immediately uh, and say that uh, all these things are forgivable uh, and we uh, uh, need to note that uh, here uh, that it is changeable. Uh, we'll come back to that uh, in, a, in a moment. All sins uh, of this uh, type of uh, all sinners of the, these types of sin can be forgiven and transformed by the power of the blood of Christ and the Spirit of God. He, he followed in verse 11. He said, And that is what some of you were. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of, of God. So he, he recognized that, uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, among the members of the church in Corinth, and I would say that among the members of all churches across the, the, the history, uh, include our own here, there are some uh, in the, on the list. And, and, and we look at the list, adulterers, adulterers, prostitutes, homosexuals, thieves, drunkards, slanders, swindlers, uh, swindlers. And, and we said that, uh, yeah, you know, I, I find myself on the list. Uh, and so we, 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 we come back uh, to the, the question, is change possible uh, for those who are on the list, especially for the homosexual tendencies and orientation? The answer from scripture is yes. Paul mentioned that that is what some of you were, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were, uh, you were justified, you were transformed uh, from the background 
uh, from that, uh, the experience and lifestyle, God can change you, God can make you whole, God can bring you back. Uh, but but, uh, but that's, that's a detail. Uh, go, going back to uh, Roman again, I want to reestablish the fundamental issue. Because a lot of people, when they get to, uh, get to this point, uh, they, they forgot what the argument was, uh, what the flow was. They, they just zero in and, and say, see, the Bible condemns homosexuality. And, and so, so they, they read in that context, forgetting that it's not about homosexuals, it's about us. It's about the whole process of exchanging God uh, for, for idols and, and, and for created things. Uh, and so the fundamental issue is here. Number one, it, it is the exchange of God's glory. The, deeper, the deepest problem of our lives, whether uh, heterosexual or homosexual, is a terrible exchange of God's glory for images, for, for created things. The exchange of the truth of God for lies and the, the disapproval of having God in our, in our life and in our, in our knowledge. So, so, so those are the three exchanges that we see. So let me put it uh, this way. Failed worship is our worst disorder. Now you say, it, really? Yes, that's the whole thing he's talking about. He's not talking about a particular sin. Uh, we'll see in a moment why he brings in uh, homosexuality as an illustration. But he's, he's illustrating the, the fact that men have failed to worship God and replace God with lesser things. Now certainly it's, it's not about somebody else, a homosexual or a different class. The fundamental issue is failed worship. Uh, and fair worship is our worst disorder and the most fundamental sin. And it is the, 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 the underlying mal uh, maladies, the wrong, the evil of the whole world. Um, uh, and, 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 and it is the, the, the most challenging things that we, we face ourselves. So to, to deal with this, we need to repair these things first. Uh, and that is to repair the failure to worship God the, uh, to, to restore the response to his glory, and that is our first concern. Then, you know, we will uh, deal with the behavior, um, uh, whether it be uh, disordered sexuality or other things in our life. So number one, the number one problem is the exchange of God's glory for lesser things. But number two is that sexual disorder is God's judgment in, in that the sexual disordering of our life uh, because things are beginning to work out into our body in a lifestyle and, and the fundamental uh, uh, desire in our heart uh, is now going corrupt. Uh, and so the, 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 the judgment upon human race is the disordering of, of, uh, of the sexual expression uh, and we, we see why in the moment. So, so, so people ask, you know, uh, is AIDS... Uh, uh, God's judgment upon homosexuality, com uh, homosexual communities. Uh, we, we, we say that homosexuality and, and all other sexual uh, 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 sins are God's judgment uh, for the replacement of God in, a, in the heart. Uh, so as, as uh, any other problems that we have, cancer, uh, other disease, because uh, uh, the, the whole universe is now under fertility, uh, and the misery in the world, including death, is God's judgment. But it's, it's working out in the physical body, it's working out in the physical world. So, so disease and uh, disordering of, of physical functions and expressions are all judgment from God, from His wrath. But uh, bringing uh, homosexuality into the focus here, homosexuality is the clearest evidence of moral inversion. The reason Paul focuses, uh, focuses on uh, homosexuality is because it is the most vivid uh, representation or drama, uh, dramatization or manifestation of the profound inversion of the human heart uh, against God and His glory. It is not a worse sin. The Bible does not say the whole, uh, homosexuality is the worst of sin. Of sin. But it is the clearest example of man replacing God, exchanging God for self and for created things. Uh, <coughs> it, it, it's, just, it's just like this, you know, take the solar system, for example, you know, the, the, the solar system 
has a centrality uh, in the center that is of the sun. The sun and, and the gravity of the sun uh, pull all the other planets into orbit. Uh, so so the, 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 the reason why everything is functioning is because of gravity of the sun uh, pulling everything else in, 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 in orbit so the planets uh, orbit uh, precisely uh, in order. Now, if you replace the, the sun with any, any of the planet, the, the, the system go haywire, the, the system collapse, because the, the, the planet doesn't have the gravity uh, to pull everything else together, and so things begin to spin out of control. The same way uh, the, happened in the spiritual sense, the, the, the gravity is actually the, the root word of glory. Uh, glory is the weightiness of God. So, so God is at the center of, of our universe, of our existence, and because God's glory is at the center, everything else functions, everything else orbit in, in order. You know, the physical world, the spiritual world, our own life, our own pursuit, our own happiness, uh, everything is in order because God is at the center, His glory is at the center, the, the weightiness of God is at the center. We begin to replace God at the center with ourselves or with created things. Then the gravity is not there, the, the, the pulling is not there, so everything else begins to unravel and go uh, in disorder. And that's what happened. Uh, and, and, and the wrath of God is to let that happen to the end degree, to let it happen uh, to its natural consequence. Uh, so the, the, the root word, uh, the, the root problem, of all problems that we see in our own life in the in the society is the replacement of God at the center. So so that's the main issue, uh, and 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 so why is it that homosexuality is now bring into focus here? Because because at the at, at the center of the issue is the worship of God and the way God wants to dramatize that worship and that relationship. Uh, and, and homosexuality is the inversion, the rebellion, the, 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 the most vivid expression of the opposite of what God in, uh, has in design. Let me just read you uh, f verses that, that will explain this. Uh, so just, just follow, follow through with me. I want to read it first in, uh, in Genesis 1. And that is uh, the, the account of, uh, of God's design of uh, God's creation of man and woman and the institution of marriage. And then I'll, I'm going to read in uh, Ephesians 5 the meaning that God wants us to see behind this creation and the institution of marriage. The representation that God designed it to be. Then you begin to say, oh, that's why homo homosexuality is brought into this focus. So in Genesis verse 1, 26 to 27. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over the earth, and over the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Uh, chapter 2, verse 22, 24. Then God, then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he has taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man, and the man said, This is now bones of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be, call, she shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. So the creation of man and woman and the institution of marriage. The meaning, the significance of that, what God... What does God want to illustrate behind that? Ephesians 5, 22 to 27. Wives, submit to your husband as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to the husbands in everything. Husband, loves your wife just as Christ loved the church, and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing of water with the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. And verse 31, 32. Very important here. 
For this reason, man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about, the church, about Christ and the church. So the whole thing is to illustrate something very awesome and very significant. So these passages tell us something just, just, uh, just very important to note. From the beginning, manhood and womanhood existed to represent or to dramatize God's relation to his people and Christ's relation to his church in the union of Christ in his glory. So in this illustration, the man represents God or Christ and is to love his wife as Christ loved the church. And the woman represents God's people, the church, in response to, uh, to the head of the, to the church, which is Christ. So the sexual union in the covenant of marriage represents the pure, undefined heart worship that is God meant to be dramatized or illustrate in the right ordering uh, for the relationship between him and his people. So, so we see that uh, in the beginning, God created man and woman and, 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 and the marriage institution. And God used that to say, this is, this is a picture of the worship of the heart that he desired from his people. That is, there is a union between God and his people. Uh, there's a, uh, there's, a, uh, there's a, uh, you know, a fellowship, a deep, pure, uh, and glorious fellowship between God and his people. Uh, and it's the, the picture of the closeness and the intimacy uh, in the marriage uh, relationship. So uh, here, in uh, the exchange, so instead, we exchange God's glory for self and for created things. So, so God for idol, truth for life, relationship for perversion uh, is really uh, uh, destructive. Uh, the beauty of the worship has been destroyed, and therefore, in this ordering, uh, in, 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 in this exchange, God let it work it out to the end degree, to, to, uh, to the final expression, uh, to the final expression, and, and, and it is a breakdown of the, 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 the heterosexual uh, union, and it is the expression of uh, homosexual inversion. So, so why the focus of homosexuality here? It is the most vivid form of that breakdown. It is an inversion of everything God intended to be uh, for man in creation. Uh, so God and man in covenant relationship now, uh, is, is represented by man and female in covenant uh, uh, marriage. Uh, and so when man uh, turned God and replaced uh, God by the image of himself, uh, created things of himself, uh, the, uh, the, the, the homosexual act represent that exchange and that focus on self. Uh, so homosexuality is a judgment of God in exchanging uh, God's glory for the image of ourselves. So we ask the question, what is more vivid uh, of, the, of the act of replacing God with self at the center than having relationship with your own image, and that is your own kind. What can be more clear than the practice of homosexual inversion in trashing God's purpose and usurping God's glory? And that's the whole picture. It's like, I say, it's like burning the flag. Uh, you, you use a symbol that God creates to describe his precious relationship with man and in sharing with man his own glory. And then you use that symbol and then paint, the, paint a cross with graffiti to say, no God, just me. You know, that's, that's the picture. You burn the flag. You use the, the, the symbol that God said, this is my relationship with man, with my, with, with, with my people. And you said, no, there's no God. It's just me and me and myself uh, at, at the center. That's the picture. And that's why Paul, Paul is bringing into uh, the, the picture of homosexuality here. Because it is not about homosexuality per se, because he, he moved forward and, 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 and give a list of, of all the sin, you know, a, a long list uh, of sin, and say this is the representation of re the replacement of God, of the rejection of God's glory in the hearts of men. So I'll come back to Roman now, and let me just uh, read from 28. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over to a depraved mind, 
to do those things which are not proper, being filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice, they are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, without understanding, untrustworthy, unloving, unmerciful. The whole list there, all represent all represented by the picture of homosexuality. And you say, what? I mean, we may not see ourselves in the picture of being homosexuals, but, you know, things like disobedient to parents even listed here, malice, gossips, they are the picture of man replacing God at the center and, and, and now committed to himself. And, and that's, that's, that's the, the, the gravest thing. And, and the verdict covers everybody. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and so, and, and so the, 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 the picture of, of the, the final rejection of God that we see now in society, uh, it, it is just the working out of, of man re replacing God, rejection God, uh, his glory by uh, uh, human agenda, uh, human focus, by self. So, so, so God is saying, you, you just want yourself and self to self, Fine, I'll let you go, and, and the final expression is just that, man to his own kind, his own agenda. And, and they, they claim that to be the right, the civil right, the freedom and everything, but at the heart is the rejection of God, the exchange of God, inversion of God's purpose and glory. And so, Paul said, now there's no excuse, no escape, and no exception in God's wrath. So the, 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 the focus for us here is, is, is that when we understand that, then, then, then we understand something is very grave, very important. That a simple act like, like here, strife and malice and gossip and, and insolent and arrogant and boastful, uh, disobedient to parents, even without understanding, even untrustworthy, even unloving, unmerciful, are all expressions of the same thing. And what is that thing? Replacement of God by self. And, and Paul said, that's, that's the central issue of everything. If you want to solve anything else in your life, fix that first. So, so we may have many problems in life. Uh, you know, we may um, uh, touch base a little bit on, on whether it's a sexual choice or orientation in terms of uh, of uh, homosexual, uh, homosexual style. But l let me bring back the, the picture of the solar system. You know, when, when, when a planet is replaced, the, the sun, everything is in, in disorder. Everything is going to go chaos. Everything is going to go to utter, uh, utter destruction. How do you fix the manifestation of the problem? You don't fix each planet. You don't fix its orbit. You fix the center you put the sun back in the center and everything going to be pulled back into orbit. And, and so that's, that's, that's the picture here. That's, that's the whole focus of Roman is that replacing the center, put God back in the center through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and so, so we begin to understand that, okay, we have many problems in life. And if you focus on fixing the problems, and not focus on the center of the problem, the issue at the center, you never fix it. Impossible to fix it. And so you have to, that's why the picture here, there's exchange, there are exchanges, and the exchanges come out with a, a, a natural progression to the, uh, to the ultimate expression of God, in, uh, of the inversion of God's design and of God's purpose and, and God himself. You replace God by man, by self, what do you expect? Everything evil is going to happen to the nth degree. So how do you fix that? You come back and say, I put God back at the center. So, 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 so that's also, you know, I want just to maybe comment a little bit here that there's an ongoing debate on homosexuality, whether it's a choice or orientation. I mean, when, when we say orientation, mean it is natural, like you're born with that tendency, and once you're born with that tendency, you can't help it, so you, you, need to, you have the freedom of civil right to live it out uh, without discrimination. 
uh, if it's a choice and you know then then you are in control you 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 you, you start the lifestyle you can decide to stop the lifestyle uh, well from the biblical perspective it's called unnatural and so we, we already read that it's called a homosexual act are called unnatural indecent degrading passion abomination detestable so it's not natural in terms of God's design. It's not natural in terms of, uh, of God's purpose. God does not create a person with homosexual design, uh, desires or tendency. Uh, the Bible tells us that people become homosexual because of the sin and ultimately because of their own choice. But in the world that is, the sun is not at the center. Everything is spinning out of orbit. The whole system is out of order. Uh, we are in the fallen world and, and we have replacing the sun with our own planet and, and like we said everything is our order and so there are disorder in everything disorder e even in the genetics of things uh, so we are born in sin we are born with sin tendencies we are born with, uh, with the only choice that we can make is for evil and so the debate on choice and orientation does not really change anything in the final analysis because what is natural, the point is that whatever physical and social or personal origin uh, of the homosexual disor dis dis disordering, none of that can be defined as good or natural uh, or normal in terms of scripture, in terms of God's design. Uh, in the world where God is the creator and the designer of life, natural means uh, in sync with God's purpose and God's design, not just natural because it has a physical origin or a physical cause. Having a physical root makes nothing right. It doesn't matter whether you're born with some generic, uh, some tendency, because we are all born with sinful orientations. Let me use that word. You know, people are born with, uh, with aggressive tendency that can lead to violence, violent in behavior. We do not condone violence. Violence is wrong. Uh, even when you are born with some tendency, you are more prone to it than the next guy. Orientation or preference, you know, I can say a child molester uh, have certain sexual orientation or preferences, but, but he has no right to pursue that tendency. You know, we don't let him. How about just simple things like lying? The Bible said we are, li we are liars from the womb. We're born, we're already lying in the womb. But we don't call lying right. We don't allow people to, 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 to lie as a, as a practice. It's not natural in the sense of being good. How about a thief? You know, he has a preference on how to make a living. And that is not working, but, but taken from others. Well, we don't allow him to work out his preference, do we? We put him in jail. So, so, so the argument is because I have orientation, because I have an innate tendency, does not make it right, does not make it natural, does not make that you have the civil right to, to pursue that. Uh, because there's a higher standard. The higher standard is God at the center, and His design and His glory governs everything. Once you have that out of whack, well, it doesn't matter what you say uh, or how you justify things. Uh, uh, things will, will go from worse to worse, from wrong to wrong, to the ultimate inversion of who God is and His purpose in life. So maybe, maybe, maybe uh, just in connection to to, social, uh, to homosexual, uh, uh, there maybe I'll just have a, a few comments uh, to to the church and to this issue, and then we'll bring back to to uh, to, to, to to a close. So, uh, so a few words to those among us who may have uh, homosexual design and tendencies. And I recognize that in, in, in a group born in sin and with all kind of disorder of things, we may have some. So first we acknowledge the pain and the presence of the, of the disorder uh, sexuality, uh, even with the ambiguity of where it comes from. Uh, like any disorder or diseases that we have, disability, we are in a, in a fallen world full of evil and disorder. But do not define your personhood and your identity by this disorder, sexuality. You are not a homosexual, period. 
you are much more than that. Don't define yourself with that disability or that disorder. Number two, put your faith and hope in Christ alone. If you're not yet a Christian, then know that in the person and work of Christ, there's the power of God unto salvation and the provision of his righteousness, as we learn in, in uh, chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. If you are a struggling Christian with these tendencies, then put your faith in Christ. In him and, and at all time in his provision, there is righteousness when you come to him in repentance and come for help. So establish and strengthen your relationship with Christ first. But most importantly, put God back at the center of your life. Put the sun back into your solar system, per se. Uh, be begin to reorder your entire life around the centrality of God, the glory of God as your highest pursuit. You know, homosexual sinning or any other sinning is an echo of exchanging God's glory with self. And so you acknowledge that you need God back in the center and, and you begin to orbit around him, then all the desires and, and the tendencies and, 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 and pursuit of your life will, become, will be pulled back into order by his power. You can't fight this. You, 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 you cannot fight the tendency of the evil heart, but God can. So number four, you commit to seek first the kingdom in purity. So we resolve, resolve to live a just and, if necessary, a celebrate life by the power of the gospel, by the, by the, by the work of the Holy Spirit, with the confidence that, that God will heal you. If God does not heal now, he will heal in the age to come. And the patience and purity will be worth it when he comes. So God can heal and he will heal in his time, and in the meantime live well for him, even with the extra challenge that you may have to bear for his glory in the pursuit of, uh, of chastity and purity. And then, number five, build a balanced friendship in the church. Seek wholesome friendship with all, both sexes, and especially in groups, and, and, and orbit your life around God and his kingdom, and you will find power to overcome. But also a few words to the church in terms of, of this issue here. Number one, it is not about homosexuality that is in focus. The focus is the replacement of God by ourselves and, and by lesser things, by created things. And that is committed by all of us. And so we, we need to, to realize that when, when, when the picture is here, it's a picture of us. The inversion that is, that is in its totality if we do not listen and, and stop the progression of evil by returning to God and put him first. That at the end, all of us will function like that, maybe not in the sexual way, but in, in all the other ways of our physical lifestyle, we will have put ourselves in the center and God outside. But then Paul said, and that is some of you, but you were washed. You will sanctify, you will justify in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in, in the spirit of the Lord. So we, we, we know that it's forgivable. We know that it's changeable. We know that some of us came from that. Uh, maybe not from homosexuality, but from all the sins that are listed that replace in God. So now come back and, and live in, in the way that is bringing honor to him. The Bible does not describe homosexual as the greater sin than any others. It's just a most vivid illustration of the very wrong thing in life, and that is the exchanging of God's glory to the lesser things in life. But uh, that's what, number one, we need to remember what homosexuality is about. It's a picture of the exchanging of God's glory for self and created things. And like I said, it might be very well a picture of us. And so we need to be uh, in repentance as we hear. But... Number two, we do care. And that is, if we have friends in the church with homosexual tendencies, we should love them and pray for them and speak biblical truth to them when they hear it. It does not mean that we uh, approve or con condone uh, the behavior, but we will be kind, we will be loving, and when appropriate, we will tell them the truth. And as long as they remain in the church, we will lovingly point to the change that God requires of them and can do for them in Christ. 
Meaning we will insist that they will change. But lovingly and kindly in God's grace. And number three, we stand under God's word. As far as the word is concerned, we stand firm under God's word. God has not, God has not called us to be politically correct, but to win souls and hearts and mind by his gospel, by his truth. God has not called us to win friends and influence people, but to preach the gospel. God has not called us to be safe, but to tell the truth. God has not called us to avoid conflict, but to love everyone. And so we will speak the truth in love and we will entrust our cause to God. So if, if, if somebody take offense to what we say here because of the scripture, we rest in God. But most importantly, as we learn this lesson, we must keep the glory of God at the center of our soul. As the sun in our solar system, again for that picture, so that all of our passions and desires and tendencies and orientations will be pulled into their proper orbit in order right focus, bring glory to God. That is how we avoid God's wrath. That's how we honor Him. So I, I just like you to respond in, in, in the view, in the picture of, of the sun at the center and planets surrounding that. And ask yourself, is God at the center of my life? Because the moment you, you answer that question, yes, then everything will be in order or is in order or going, going to be. But the moment you say no, the whole thing is disintegrating. And it will work to the end degree, to the ultimate inversion of God's glory. So let's be honest and let's view ourselves and ask that question and share it to, to a friend and say, pray for me. I'm there, I'm not there. I'm working on it. The Holy Spirit is working on it for me. But let's just take a look. Is God at the center? So take your time, pray with, with the one next to you, and we'll come back and worship and, and to ask God to, for his help so that indeed he will be at the center now and forever.